I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday on Twitch, so come through and be a part of these videos. Yo, what's going on guys? It's Broads, and I know immediately what you're thinking. Hey, his, uh, his voice is matching up to his, his mouth on screen right now. A bit too good. Basically, when I uh, pulled this Twitch VOD and decided to start editing it, I realized that my voice was really weird. I was having some audio issues, I guess, in the stream, so I decided I would re-record this intro because I didn't feel good enough uh, posting the intro as it was. But let me know if you guys like this post-recording style of commentary instead of the live recording. I could always go for that but it's always just easier to record in the stream plus i know a few of you guys get some kicks out of all the bloopers and retakes that i have to do uh when i'm recording these intros but today guys we're talking about the lunalite archetype so uh, for those of you guys who want a reason to play this deck they're furries and they're strippers but in all seriousness it's actually a really strong deck going second uh, unfortunately if i have to be completely honest with you guys going first this deck is god awful so please by the love of god if you play this deck and you win the coin toss, make sure you're picking to go second because going first, this deck really can't do anything. In terms of the overall competitive viability of the deck, I find that this deck is okay. You can definitely get into platinum with it, but overall, I don't think it is the best deck. A lot of the games that I was playing, I wasn't getting the hands that I needed with all the cards I needed. I don't know if maybe I just suck with the deck or something, but I literally could not OTK people a lot of the time. But like I said, this deck still has the ability to OTK people, no problem, if you get the right cards. So if you really want to play a strong OTK deck, I would look elsewhere, but if you like the Lunar Light archetype, I don't see any problem investing your gems in this deck because it is a lot of fun and it can get you into platinum without any issues really. Also keep in mind that I'm talking about Lunar Lights as a pure build right now. I think this archetype would synergize really well with the Tri Brigades, like pretty much every other archetype in this damn game right now. So I'll have a Lunar Light Tri Brigade video coming out in the near future and I'm sure my opinion of that deck will be a bit more positive than the pure Lunar Light build here. Anyways, now on to the card by card of the deck. So we're starting off with three Lunar Light Tiger. This is arguably like the best main deck monster in the deck. Basically is a pendulum scale. This just lets you revive uh, Lunar Light from your graveyard once per turn. Uh, but it destroys it in the end phase. But keep in mind, this says once per turn. It's not a hard once per turn. So if you have a way to bounce this card back to your hand and reactivate it, you can activate its effect multiple times per turn, which just makes this card absolutely insane. It also has a monster effect that lets it revive a Lunar Light when it's destroyed by card effect or by battle. That comes up a little bit, but uh, the more important one is its pendulum effect. Next, we're running one Lunar Light Black Sheep. Uh, Lunar Light Black Sheep isn't the craziest card in the deck. I don't think it's that important. You might even be able to cut this if you want. But basically, it lets you recur a Lunar Light from your graveyard to your hand if you either discard this from your hand or if it's used as fusion material. Next on the list is Lunalite Blue Cat. So Lunalite Blue Cat, when it's special summoned, you can target a Lunalite on your field and double its attack to the end phase. Another effect it has when it's destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you summon a Lunalite from your deck. So if you summon this card out of your graveyard using Lunalite Tiger or something and it gets destroyed in the end phase, you get a free summon. But mostly you're just using this for OTKs. Next, we're running three Lunalite Collider Chick. This is one of the main starters. Actually, this is the main starter that you want to draw in your hand. This card basically, when you summon it, lets you send a Lunar Light from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard in order to change this card's name to that card's name. So this is useful for fusion summoning some of the big fusions because a lot of the big fusions require like specific monster names to be summoned. As well, this is a good combo starter because you can send a Yellow Martin to the graveyard and then Yellow Martin can use a graveyard effect to resummon itself. Next up, we're running two Lunar Light Emerald Birds. So this card's nice because if you have a Lunar Light in your hand that you'd prefer to have in the graveyard, you can normal summon Lunar Light Emerald Bird and discard that card to draw another card. So this card's great for drawing cards and obviously it's graveyard setup if you need that as well. Plus, if it's sent to the graveyard for a fusion summon, you can target one of your banished Lunar Lights or Graveyard Lunar Lights and add it back to your hand. Next we have two Lunar Light Yellow Martin. This is one of the most important combo pieces in the deck as well. If this card's in your hand or graveyard, you can return a Lunar Light from your field to your hand and then special summon this card. So like I mentioned with Lunar Light Tiger, if you have the Tiger on the field and you've already activated its effect, you can literally bounce it back to the hand and then reactivate and then use it again. Plus Lunar Light Yellow Martin gets summoned off of this as well. Its other cool effect is if it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add a Lunar Light Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. So this is the card that you'll be using to search out your Lunar Light Fusion as well. Next up, we have Lunar Light Wolf. So this is the other Pendulum monster in this deck. Basically, all this card does is when it's in a Pendulum scale, it allows you to fusion summon a Lunar Light using monsters in your graveyard, which is pretty nice. And if it's on the field as a monster, it gives your Lunar Lights piercing damage, which can come in handy sometimes when you're going for OTKs with the big fusion monsters. And moving on to the hand traps here. So hand traps, you're kind of up to what you want to use. I personally love Ash Blossom, so I make sure I, I run three of the Ash Blossoms. As well as the three Ash Blossoms, I also run two Max C. You can basically run whichever hand traps you want, like I said, but make sure you run at least like five, six minimum hand traps in any deck that you build, just in order to be able to interrupt your opponent. 
Moving now on to the spells and traps of the deck. So we have Lunalite Perfume. You run three of these cards because this card is essentially a monster reborn for the deck and it's also a searcher. So once it's in the graveyard after you've used it to summon a Lunalite back, you can discard a card and add a Lunalite monster from your deck to your hand. Next we have three Foolish Burial Goods. So Foolish Burial Goods just lets you send a spell or trap card from your deck to the graveyard. So one option is you can send the spell card I just mentioned, the uh, Lunalite Perfume. But if you don't want to send Lunalite Perfume to search a monster, I also run one Lunalite Serenade Dance. So this is a trap card that you literally only run one of just to send to your graveyard with extra uh, foolish burial goods, sorry. And when this card's in your graveyard, you can banish it, discard a card, and special summon a Lunalite from your deck. So this card is great because it's a, basically a special summon at the cost of a discard. Next up, we have the two Lunalite Fusion. So this is the fusion card of the deck. This is the way it'll be fusion summoning as well as the Lunalite Wolf as a pendulum scale. So the cool thing about this card is if your opponent controls a monster from the extra deck on the field, you can actually use one monster from your deck or your extra deck to make that fusion summon. And a lot of the big fusion monsters in this deck require specifically named monsters, and you don't always have the opportunity to have them on the field or in the graveyard. So this card will let you use like a monster from your extra deck to summon one of the big extra deck monsters, which I'm sure you will see uh, when the highlights come around. Next, we're running three Fire Formation Tanky. This card just essentially lets you search one of the Beast Warriors out of your deck, and every Lunalite monster is a Beast Warrior. And now for the beauty of post commentary, this might go a little weird, but I'm running a bunch of going second cards. Like I said in the start of this uh, video, this is a going second deck, so you're going to load your deck with as many going second cards as you have in your collection. So starting off, I run one Lightning Storm because it's either Harpy's Feather Duster or basically Regeki if you have no cards on the field. Obviously, you can run more of these, like I said, but I only have one in my collection and I didn't really have any more ultra rare gems to craft with. If there's anything I would really change about this deck immediately, it would be getting more Lightning Storms. I think running maybe two of these would be better than one, possibly even three would be worth it as well next i'm running three triple tactics talent i honestly think this is one of the most underrated cards in the whole game i never see anyone talk about this card or use it if your opponent activates a hand trap or like a graveyard effect or something during your turn you can either draw two cards you can either take control of one of your opponent's monsters to the end phase or you can look at your opponent's hand choose one card from it and shuffle into the deck next i have two twin twister this card can be really good or really bad if you're playing against a deck that doesn't really set any back row this card's kind of a brick in your hand but if you're playing against like eldlich or one of those kind of decks this card is great for clearing out the back row before you make your plays and lastly here i got my uh prismatic forbidden droplet i honestly think forbidden droplet's one of the best cards in the whole game because it's good going first or going second but basically you can discard from your hand and negate an opponent's monster effect and if you discard a monster to use this card, they can't even respond to it with a monster negate or something like that. So this card's absolutely unreal. I would run it at minimum two. I would probably run three though, if I had the ability to. Moving on to the extra deck. So starting off with the fusions, I got one Lulite -like Cant Dancer. You barely ever summon this card, but it's a good card to have in your extra deck just because of the name. And sometimes you really don't have an option. You have to either use this card as fusion material or sometimes in a really, really dire situation, you might just go into this card. But for the most part, it's just there for the name. Next up is Lunalite -like Panther Dancer. So this card requires one one Lunalite Cat Dancer and one Lunalite Monster as its materials. So that kind of shows why I have one Cat Dancer just in case I have to go in this card. But for the most part, what you're going to be using this card for is to go into the Ultimate Boss Monster, which is the Lunalite Leo Dancer, which we'll cover here in a sec. But if you so happen to go into this card and you don't really have a choice, this card does have the ability to OTK just because it can attack all your opponent's monsters twice per turn. And if you have a card like Lunalite Wolf on the field, it inflicts piercing damage with this. So this card sometimes can get OTKs, but for the most part, you're not really using this one that much either. Next, we have Lunalite Saber Dancer. Saber Dancer just requires three Lunalite monsters, and this card's basically just a beater. It gains 200 attack for each Beast Warrior that's either banished or in your graveyard, so essentially it starts off at 3,600 attack, and your opponent can't target it with effects, so essentially it just becomes an untargetable huge beater. So I go into this card sometimes, but it's not the card I go into the most. And finally, we have the Supreme Furry. Lunalite Leo Dancer is the boss monster of this deck. She's absolutely cracked. She's got 3,500 attack. She can't be targeted by effects. She can't be destroyed by effects. And she can make a second attack during each battle phase. Another really cool thing about this card is if your opponent happens to have a monster with even higher attack and you can't hit over it, all you have to do is attack into another one of the monsters. And then the second ability of Leo Dancer activates where she literally destroys all your opponent's special summon monsters. Now the thing to keep in mind is it does require one Lunalite Panther Dancer to summon it in its materials. So that's why you'll use Kaleido Chick's effect to send Panther Dancer from your extra deck to the graveyard to change its name to Panther Dancer, or you can just use Lunalite Fusion to send your Panther Dancer directly from the extra deck to the graveyard, which is why Lunalite Fusion is also such a good card in this deck. 
Moving on to the Xyz monsters. So like I said, this deck is horrible going first, but you need to have some kind of options if you are stuck going first. So Evil Swarm Nightmare is basically just one of those cards that could potentially help you if you're going first. So when your opponent special summons a monster, you can detach material and just flip it face down, and you can do that up to twice per turn because it has two materials on it. So this card could potentially make you survive that first turn. And to be fair, it is quite an annoying card. So if you do manage to establish it, your opponent might have to use some effects to get rid of it. Next up is Diamond Direwolf. So if you detach one material from it, you can target a beast where you control destroy it and then destroy one other card on the field. So if you guys play Duel Links, you're probably familiar with this card, but a cool synergy it has in this deck is actually with Lunalite Tiger. So if you have Lunalite Tiger face up on your field and you destroy it using your Diamond Dire Wolf, Lunalite Tiger will also special summon a Lunalite from your graveyard. So you get like a plus one in card advantage from it, which is pretty cool. But honestly, that doesn't come up too much. Next up is Tornado Dragon. So Tornado Dragon is essentially just MST with legs. It uh, attach a material from it and destroy one spell trap on the field, which comes in handy a good amount. Next up is the Legend. Baguska. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this if you watch any of my videos. Baguska is another good going first card because if it's in face-up defense position, any monster your opponent summons or even you summon is turned into defense position and they can't activate their effects. Time Thief Redoer is actually one of the most important combo pieces in this deck, which is interesting because it's literally not even a Lunalite card. Essentially what it does is it has three potential effects depending on what type of material you detach from it and during each standby phase you take the top card of your opponent's deck and attach it to it. So here's the three effects based on what you get. So if it's a monster card, you banish this card to the end phase which helps you dodge effects if it's a spell card you just get to draw a card and if it's a trap card you can place one face up card your opponent controls to the top of their deck so all three of these effects come in handy especially the monster effect so when you overlay into this card using a yellow martin you can actually detach the yellow martin just to banish this card until the end phase and that triggers yellow martin's effect to then grab your lunar light fusion out of the deck so see in the highlight video about how i use this card a lot it's my extra deck combo piece Next up, we have Dugara's The Timeless. This card's pretty crazy because it's utility. You can either skip your next draw phase, draw two cards. You can either skip your main phase one and then special summon from your grave, or you can skip your next battle phase and then double a monster's attack on your side of the field. Another great thing is you have to detach both materials for, for this to activate. So by detaching both materials, you can load up your graveyard, maybe activate Martin's effect in the graveyard, maybe use Lunalite Wolf's effect of fusion out of the graveyard. There's so many ways you can use this card, but you just gotta be sure when you use one of its effects that you're ready for its downside during the next turn. Next up is Zeus. You guys all know Zeus. If you're playing any Xyz deck, you might as well run a Zeus in it just because this card is absolutely insane if you manage to summon it. On to the Link Monsters. We're starting off here with Underclock Taker, the Beyblade as I like to call him. So basically what Beyblade does is he essentially lets you turn your opponent's attack to zero. You can essentially turn your opponent's monster's attack to zero and attack over it. And with some of the Lunar Light Fusion effects, sometimes you can attack them twice, which makes this card super good. Next up, we have the IP Masquerina package. So we have IP Masquerina as well as two Nightmare cards. So we have Nightmare Phoenix, which we use if we want to destroy a spell or trap or we have nightmare unicorn to go into if we want to bounce the card back into the deck but yeah guys that is the post commentary for this deck like i said let me know if you guys like the style of post commentary but yeah let's get into the highlights and see what this deck can do all right let's see if we can go first start with foolish burial goods here we'll send the trap card lido chick um now i think we're just gonna use yellow martin i mean sorry not yellow martin the serenade we could go for emerald bird actually i think i'm gonna bounce the Emerald Bird back to my hand. Okay, we'll do Time Thief Redoer. Redoer, yeah. Effect. Attach Yellow Martin, we get our Fusion card. We'll set one, we will pass. Deck is so good going first. White, is this playing? Oh my God, he's playing Skull Servant. <laughs> Let's go. Maybe, yeah, he's playing Skull Servant. Sends another Skull Servant. The thing is, if I banish his Skull Servant from the graveyard, he just can't use any other card effects that are called Skull Servant for the rest of the turn. This card kind of shuts down the entire deck. Are you sure about that? Come on, Time Thief Redoer, give me something sauce off the top of the deck. Give me a spell card. Let me draw one. I'm trying to draw a card. Oh, let's go. And it was Charge of the Light Brigade. Now he can't use this. Yo, that's sick. Okay, let's summon Lunalite Emerald Herb. Travis getting some dubs. I think he's in a wee bit of trouble. Okay, we'll reactivate the Tiger. You know, just a thought. Okay, here I will get Dugara's out. Wait, wait, let me try this, let me try this. I'm gonna try a, a, a funny OTK. Let's double Time Thief Redoer's attack. Now let's Lunalite Fusion. Wait, he's activating an effect, what's happening? Triple Tactics down. use an effect during my turn. Time to do this. We'll draw two. I don't think I have lethal anymore. I think that actually shut down my lethal. Okay, we'll just make IP Masquerina. And then during his turn, we can always go into Nightmare Unicorn. Oh shit, it's King of the Skull Servants! It's the King of the Skull Servants! King of the Skull Servants back to the deck. Oh my god! 
He summoned Skull Servant! What am I supposed to do about this? How is this card not banned, bro? Fuck. Okay, he summons King of the Skull Servants. He's powering up! Oh my god, he's got 6,000 attack. Uh, Kaleido Chick. Uh, Blue Cat. To the grave with you. Now that is a big boy on the field though, I do have to figure out how I'm gonna get over that. This guy's like, oh, I have a 6,000 attack monster on the field, right? He's like, man, this is like, this is impossible for someone to hit over. We summon this weird looking Beyblade, alright? We summon Beyblade. Get some of that going. I don't know what the fuck just happened. Okay, I thought Beyblade would work. I thought I would lower his attack by a shit ton, but we didn't. At least we have the free combos. I guess here we'll just bring back the Emerald Bird. Let's try this out. Diamond Direwolf. Destroy Lunalite Wolf and his King of the Skull Servants. Yes, we did it! We beat the King of the Skull Servants! <laughs> Planet Pathfinder to start, okay. Grabs the Numeron Network. Form the field with the Numeron Gates. Run gate Sanya. I don't know what that card even does. I don't know what, what to expect here. Summon the Emerald Bird. Pitching the Emerald Bird to draw. Uh Kaleido Chick. Yellow Martin will grab the fusion. A redoer to the board. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Close the deck. Okay, I get Kai Jude. Shitty, but it's okay. Aha. Glorious numbers. They all skate Sanya's back. So do you summon all four of these? Oh no, here's the... It's over 9,000! What? Moonlight Fusion. Panther Dancer coming on out. Destroy one other monster on the field. This card can't be destroyed. And since you activated a monster effect during my turn, I can take control of one monster you control gotcha, bitch. until the end phase. But that will swing in. For 8,500. <laughs> Triple tax talent. Oh. <laughs>